Hi, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Rachel. I'm a homeschooling mom of four, uh, ages 11, eight, five, and two. Today I am going to be sharing with you just a few of our group subjects that we're gonna be using this upcoming 2022 to 2023 school year. So grab a cup of coffee and let's go. First things first, I am trying something new this year. Um, I don't know why it took me so long to actually decide to do this. My aunt so graciously gave me her, or she's letting me borrow her um, before five in a row and five in a row volumes one, two, and three. Now those are the first edition, the original, like the OG five in a row books. So um, that was, I think that was in the mm, late 90s, early 2000 era when she was doing her homeschooling. And um, well, things have changed since then. And there's a lot of um, updated information in the book. There's, well, let me just share it with you. I'm gonna just go ahead and get started. Uh, I am still waiting on one of the books to come. I'm waiting for volume two, the new edition to come. Um, I did buy that one used from someone on Marketplace. Um, I went ahead and bought the Before Five in a Row, new from Rainbow Resources, and I also bought the Volume 4, new from Rainbow Resources. And with the Volume 4, I did buy the books as well. Um, and I'll get into that in just a minute on the books that go along with it. But the, the reason I chose Volume 4 uh, is for my boys who are 11 and 8. And this is more like an upper elementary-ish age. I mean, it says right in the book, that it's four ages, nine to 10. Um, the, and I'll show you the books that go along with it too. And just So basically the books that go along with the volume four um, are a little bit more uh, rich. They're, they're much more rich in their, sorry for the lighting there. They're much more rich and in depth and they're longer picture books. Now granted it is a picture book. Uh, it's not a chapter book just yet. Um, the chapter books start in volume five and um, the beyond five in a row. So maybe I should go back to before five in a row. <laughs> so before five in a row is designed for ages two to four. And I'm planning on using, I'm sorry, ages two to five. It does say two to four in the cover here, but I, I think, I mean, it's like a, a high ceiling, low floor, low floor concept. Um, Basically, you can kind of adapt and change your lessons to go along with the ages and stages of the kiddos that you're doing the rowing with. The whole concept and premise of the five in a row part is that you take one book and you read it every day um, and then you pull different subjects and topics from that book. So you read the same book for a week for five days all in a row like for example uh, blueberries for sal would be one of them and you would read that monday read it again tuesday read it again wednesday thursday friday so here's blueberries for sal and it tell you you talk about the title the author um and there's a little summary for you and then the first part is bible health and safety and then there's math. So for, for example, math is using blueberries, fun to eat, or other counting objects such as blocks, blocks. Act out the scene on page eight and nine of Blueberries for Sal. Introduce concepts of counting and present the idea of subtracting, taking away. So all of this is done with, um, on like day one, you would work on math. And then day two, you could work on history. And then day three, you could work on science and botany. Day four, you could work on art. And day five would be working on music. With the music part, like you're probably wondering, like how do you get music out of blueberries for Sal? Well, if you think back to when Sal first started picking blueberries, it was an empty pail and um, it was ka kaplink, kaplink, kaplunk. So those sounds, are actually like musical sounds if you really think about it. So then you would clap your hands to the sounds and 
try composing a little song. So those are the, those are the examples that they give you. Now the updated version of before five in a row is they have printables in the back to help you with, um, instead of like digging around to try and find different things, uh, it has like printables that are in the back here that you could copy and cut out. Um, there also is story discs. That's another thing that they do in um, five in a row is they have story discs So, and you have a wall map. And the idea is that every time you read a book, you the part of the geography is you um, pin it up to your map wherever the story took place, which is another aspect of geography that you can incorporate into your storybooks. So that's before five in a row. And I do have some of the books. I don't have all of the before five in a row books. Some of them are out of print really, really hard to get. And then for volume four, this one again is, I'm gonna be using this with my my two boys that are 11 and eight. And the volume four is a little bit different. Instead of taking one book a week, it's actually stretched out over two weeks. And they also give you lesson planning sheets in the very back of this book as well, that you can copy and um, print out and come up with your bi-weekly lesson plans and there's it's just a lot more um, in depth for the volume four so I did get those books because again volume four is incredibly hard to come by and I'm all about like getting used as much as possible because why not it's a uh, it's good for the earth it's good for the wallet <laughs> everything the books that I got for volume four include tree lady Albert, The Pumpkin Runner, Mailing May, Rocks of Oxen, Hannah's Cold Winter, and Cowboy Charlie. And there is one on back order, um, I believe it's grass shoes or oh, I can't remember the name of it exactly anyway that one's on back order so I should get that one hopefully soon but um, anyway we have a great start and the really cool thing too is that you don't have to start in the exact order that they give you of the books like you can pick and choose which book you want to start with or you don't even have to do all of the books if you don't want to um, it's just a really neat unique approach to a book study where you can pull all the different subjects from a storybook. And again, I mean, these books are like, here's Hannah's Cold Winter. Um, let's see if I can just do like a little flip through for you. I mean, the pages, the readings are a little bit longer. Um, and I can actually have like my, my boys read this out loud to each other. Um, like if I'm with the girls, um, and then, you know, we can have a discussion about it. Um, and all the subjects again, like you would get math, science, geography, um, all the aspects of, all the components of social studies, language arts, art, math. Um, and again, this one also has the story discs and you would tape them up or um, tack them up to a map. So again, like there's the first book, I think Rocks of Oxen takes place in Arizona. So then you'd take the story disc from Rocks of Oxen and plop it right onto Arizona. Oh, the other thing that's updated in the five in a row books in the volume two is that, hang on, let me get it. They have teacher's notes at the end of, oh, just to have some rocks box. Um, they have teacher's notes at the end here. So if you're gonna pre-plan your lessons and you could you know, make a list of different books and DVDs or audiobooks that you wanna pull, maybe about Arizona or <clears throat> websites that you wanna visit, et cetera. And they have virtual field trips. So here is the virtual field trip for Roxa Boxen. Um, and you, you would go to the website um, where it's a Four Corners monument. Um, and then you would uh, printing photos and paste them down below. And then here is a report where you talk about the desert biome. I mean, so this is a much more advanced version. Again, this is like more upper elementary age for the volume four. One of the other books that we're gonna do together is The Young Naturalist from Wild and Free. 
I got this over the summer or early summer and it is it just really spoke to me like I felt I needed to get this it is it was beautiful on their website before it was even sent out to me it does have an online component to it as well if you want to do that um and it also has the book study here as well it's a 12-week nature study that you can do you can again you can pick and choose what week you want to do when you want to do it um, maybe you live in another part of the world and you know something might be happening in your area that wouldn't necessarily be like week two it might be week eight or something like that so um these are really neat topics i mean you've got bees is week one birds is week two clouds week three trees week four and each of the weeks have five days of activities um, so for example, like bees, you would, on day one, learning all about bees, day two is a nature journal and you would um, talk about the queen bees. Day three is a handicraft, so you'd make a bee oasis. Day four is exploration, you learn about bee habitats, and day five is illustration. And it seems like just about all of the day fives, um, you would do some type of watercolor. So that was why, if you had seen my previous video about my Amazon purchases, I had a big stack of watercolor and that was with the intent of using it with this. So we did not start that yet. Um, I did get a few things ready for starting with bees. Um, but again, we didn't start it yet. Uh, and the week, week 12 is ecosystems. So there you go, you can take a look at that. So that's available through Wild and Free. Another thing that we do as a group are so we do, we got these heritage letters um, and they have really neat letters that come right to your mailbox. It's snail mail. It's really fun. I, I believe it's uh, over at the Waldoc Way. She was talking about doing mail Mondays and I really, really like that idea. Who doesn't love an onomatopoeia, right? <laughs> Each of the letters come with a really nice letter from whoever the person a topic or person of interest is. Um, <clears throat> we have Harriet Quimby, Benjamin Rush, and it comes with a postcard. Um, we, and then we have a few of the National Park letters as well. So here's Rocky Mountain National Park, USS Alabama, and Skagit Valley Tulip Festival. So it just has some really neat information about the travels and about the locations. And what's even better is that on her website, you can go and print out a full week, week's worth of lessons. There's videos, links you can uh, click on and it'll take you right to YouTube and you can watch um, a documentary. It's just, I love those letters. What I do not have printed out yet is the art artist study that we're going to be using so we are going to be doing the world's greatest artists volume one and this is from confessions of a homeschooler now i did not print this out just yet i am still trying to figure out how i want to do this as far as printing it out because um, a lot of the activities are lap books which are really incredible they're a really great way to learn um, for the kids to be like more hands-on with putting together a lap book and um, filling out all the information. We had done a lap book once before when we did a wolf unit study. Here is the teacher's guide. This is the world's greatest artists. And it goes over Pablo Picasso, Vincent Van Gogh, Jackson Pollock, uh, Monet, Matisse, O'Keefe, Michelangelo, Da Vinci, and um, it goes off of a book series called Getting to Know the World's Greatest Artist, and that's by Mike Venezia. Um, I ordered all of the books through Thrift Books. Amazing place to get books, by the way. And there was one I could not find there, and I don't remember which one it was now. I think it might have been Matisse. I could not find him on Thrift Books. So I did buy that one used on Amazon. And I can go over a more in-depth, like sort of flip through, if you will, once I get all those books from Thrift Books. Last thing I wanna share with you is a study that we're doing right now because ooh, we need it, <laughs> is this. This is my brother's keeper. 
Learning to Love Your Siblings God's Way. And this is by Kim Sorgans. Books. Hi, you have books? Uh -huh. Oh. <laughs> Can you say hi? No. No. <laughs> so this is getting to uh, getting to learning to love your siblings God's way um, from Not Consumed Ministries. And we just started this. We're on literally on day one. We started it today. Um, and I think it's going to go, I'm fingers crossed, it goes really, really well. I can do a flip through this if you like. I'm not going to do it right now because, hi. <laughs> but I did get the junior, the primary, and the teacher's guide. All digital. Just printed it off. And I have a, a binding system. Not spiral bound. I wish, but no. Not spiral bound. It's just one of those. Well, yeah, you can see it. One of these kinds. I forget what they're called. <laughs> Anyway, if you have a good binding machine that doesn't break the bank, let me know. <laughs> okay, well, thanks for uh, watching and hope you enjoyed it. If you like this video, give me a big thumbs up, like, subscribe, and stay up to date with all new content that I will be dropping soon.